Welcome to the Overflow. Welcome to South. Welcome to Brownfield. Brownfield! <laughs> so grateful. Welcome to the online people, online campus. Listen, to the online campus people, if you can get here, you should. You should get here in person if you can. Amen. Shout out to um, my family that's watching at home. They can't get here right now, um, but shout out to them. And um, thank you to Stephanie, who has been a rock. Um, back about five months ago, my husband graduated to glory. And um, so she stepped in to help while I'm on the road. Listen, I, there's no way I could do all this by myself. So thank you, Stephanie. <clears throat> I was supposed to give away some books. I don't know where the books are. Go see the bookstore. It's somewhere in the bookstore. Um, we've got book three of Mandy and Friends coming out soon. Um, and we're starting some discipleship early in January. If you want to talk about that and see about that, you can look at amandahill.org. Please silence your cell phones quickly. I want to honor your leaders here today because um, it's been three, four years ago. I don't know, one of those. After COVID, everything seems to run together. And um, so years ago, uh, Pastor Trish, really Prophet Trish, and I became a great friends. Thank you. Thank you, my sweet son. Uh, holy pillow talk for a man, not a woman. All, all you women love it, but see, it's not just for women. Listen, if I can be a son of God, you can be the bride of Christ. Holy pillow talk for a man. Anybody? Anybody? Oh, oh, oh. I mean, wow, talk about a spirit of sprint. Okay, anybody? Yep, come on. All for the babies. Here you go, sorry. Go see the store. Um, <laughs> um, so about four years ago, uh, Pastor Trish and I connected. Um, we've been sisters ever since. Um, Bishop was a brother to my husband. I can't look at y'all. I'm just gonna talk about you. I can't talk to you right now. Um, when David graduated, um, they, I, I, was a, <clears throat> I was abandoned by a lot of people, but not them. Amen. And um, they're, they're ride or die people. If you ever cross them, you cross me. You don't want to cross me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. There's a difference between Prophet Amanda and Mama Amanda. Amen. Amen, somebody. But um, they've been um, family to me and to my family. <clears throat> they fasted for my husband, and um, praise God, he's healed. Amen. And many people would say, well, Amanda, why are you still doing this? Why are you still traveling? Um, whenever David was sick in March, I was here for pink, and he basically kicked me out of his uh, hospital room. And I was, going to, I was going to stop for a little while. I don't want to say quit, but I was going to stop for a little while. And my son and my daughter both looked at me and they said, Mom, if he pushed you to go when he was here and he was sick, now that he's healed, how much sense does it make that you don't go? So here I am, broken, but here I am, right? You can do things broken. Your brokenness doesn't have to stop you. If you quit because of your brokenness, then that means weakness. And let the wheat say, I am strong, right? Okay. That's, that was free. All right, so let's get into the word. The message title this morning is 5784, 84, 5784, year of thresholds, gates, and garments. Thresholds, gates, and garments. I'm gonna talk briefly, I'm gonna unpack very briefly, and then we're gonna move quick. So in September, we moved into the Hebraic year 5784. Each letter in the Hebrew year of the alpha, in the alphabet has a corresponding numerical value, and it's both a language and a numerical system. Stick with me, I'm going somewhere. So we're about to enter 2024. Hebraically, we went into 5784. So 80 in the num with, with the number in Hebrew is the letter Pei, P-E-Y. And it looks like the picture of a mouth. They're gonna show it in a second, hopefully. It's the picture of a mouth. Pei is the picture of a mouth. So in the number four in Hebrew is Dalet. Dalet is the picture of a door or a gate. So there are several words that's linked with 
Dalet, I'm going to say them quickly. We're going to talk about them in a moment. Delilah, Deliverance, David, Deborah, Daniel, Dagon, Generation, Trample, Judge, Deliverance, Dance. All of these are associated with the word Dalet, which is the number four, 5784. So what does that mean? I mean, let's put it together. Dalet's the picture of a door. It means road or path. It means to enter. This is a year to war over the door of your future. To war over the door of your gate. This is a crucial year to go through the door. See, it's not just doors that are ahead this year. And I said this in first service. But I want you to know, TWC, that it is literally for you a year of the double doors. It's a year of the double gates. What does that mean? It's Isaiah 45. And this is what it says. To Cyrus, I'm opening up double gates or double doors and no one can shut it because this is the year, TWC, that you are turning the battle at the gate. So what was taken in previous seasons and previous years, you are recovering in 5784. Amen. Come on, somebody. And what does that mean? It means the gates will not be shut. Isaiah 45, 3 says, I will give you treasures of darkness. What does that mean? It is a cache of hidden weapons. See, the enemy would try to take the weapons and hide them. But the Lord says, in this year, I'm giving you new weaponry. I'm giving you a weapons upgrade, says God. I'm releasing what has been withheld, and I'm uncovering it so you can come and get it. So let's put it together. Pay Dalet. Say pay. Dalet. Pay Dalet. 84. We must speak to our doors this year. It's a time to speak because we live in a voice activated kingdom. So what we speak really does matter. And many of you are saying, well, I'm so tired from the previous warfare. Sugar, get in line. Why can't we just have peace? Well, let me talk to, talk to you for just a moment about the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. In Hebrew, it's Sar Shalom. Say Sar Shalom. Put it together. Sar Shalom. Sar, it means one who wrestles, one who wars, one who governs, and one who rules. So we think of him as just having a crown and sitting on the throne, and just he speaks like this right here. No, he don't. That's not exactly grammatically correct, but no, he don't. Okay, shalom means peace. Peace comes when you destroy the authority and the author of chaos. Sar shalom. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 16, 9, a wide door for effective service and ministry has opened for me in Ephesus, a very great and promising opportunity. And there are many adversaries who oppose and stand against me. Anybody got some adversaries? Anybody have some opposition? Listen, then if you have opposition, that means you have great opportunity. But if you don't have any opposition this year, you have no opportunity. And if there's no opposition, that means you're probably serving the other kingdom instead of his. Great opportunities are always accompanied by great opposition. If you've been severely opposed, well done. Let's talk about the thresholds. Thresholds biblically are a place of great importance. It's a crossover point. It's a transition point. It's an entrance into something new. At the threshold, you've got to leave behind the old. It's a point of arrival or it's a, pay, a point of departure. It's a transition point. See, at every door, at every gate, there is a threshold. Thank you, Moose, for this door. There is a threshold that you have to go through. And in Hebrew, I just knocked something over. Well, I'm knocking over weapons this morning. In Hebrew, the word threshold translates to pathan. Say pathan. Pathan literally means serpent or snake. So at the threshold, there is always lying a serpent or a snake. And in the South, this is how we deal with snakes. And see, it's a shovel because you can work with it and you can dig and you can plow, but it's also got this little point thing. You see this little point here that acts like a sword. Several years ago, we, I live on a hundred acre farm out in the country. It's a family farm. 
And several years ago, we, had his, we, had, we have snakes all the time. But this snake come up to my window like it was watching me. No, you didn't. So I went outside. That snake got on a brush, a shrub, and then it flew. Literally, it leapt off the brush, off the shrub to come and get to me. I said, the devil is a liar. And I went for that snake. And my, my daughter was like, <gasps> you know, when she, she saw the crazy side of her mom. But here's the thing. Even though it might have been happening in the natural, in the spirit, it was a warning to me. And many of us have thresholds that we need to walk through. But there are enemies that are opposing for us to walk through. And see, here's the thing. Many of us want to blame every demon in the county for what we've been dealing with. But many times, it's actually your flesh that you need to crucify at the threshold. See, Jesus said in Luke 19, listen carefully, I've given you authority to trample on scorpions, sor scorpion, scorpions. That's a new one. Maybe that's a new word, scorpions. Serpents and scorpions, that's what I meant. And the ability to exercise authority over all the power of the enemy. See, trample is a dalet word. So this season, when we see the scorpions and when we see the serpents that are laying at the threshold, we've already been given authority to trample them. Well, what does that mean? See, you have curse canceling, yoke breaking, anointing to defeat the enemy that's at the gate and at the door. Snakes hate the anointing. Snakes hate the word. The reason why you can't deal with the snakes at the threshold is because you don't even know the word. You would prefer to call Bishop and Pastor Trish and say, can you come and pray for me? Instead of dealing with the serpents and the scorpions that are laying there. The reason why is because you are inept and uneducated and ignorant in the ways of the word of God. And I'm, I'm not trying to be ugly. That's really not me being ugly. This is the nice version. So here, listen, you need to get in the word. It's the word that crushes the head of the enemy. When the enemy came to Jesus in the wilderness, he used the word. And for all of you who would prefer to just sing a little song and you would prefer to do things a little bit differently because you just want everything of the spirit. You want to feel good, but you don't want the word. See, those who know him worship him in spirit and in truth because you've got to have the word and you've got to have the spirit. If you get all spirit, you get flaky and kooky. When you have all word, you get religious and inflexible. You've got to have both. For the word of God is living and active, full of power. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. You know this scripture. Get in your word and find out what it means. So everyone is worried. See, the, the Israelites were worried whenever they got into the promised land. They were worried about the giants. Everyone is worried about the giants on the other side of the door. Really, the giant that lays here is what you've not crucified yet. Everyone's worried about that. You better discern the real giant that's at the threshold this year. The real giants are the ones that you have not killed yet. You've not crucified yet. The real giants aren't all those demons that you want to blame. Many times the real giants are actually lying dormant in your flesh. At the threshold, you're either going to leap forward or you're going to shrink back. At the threshold, you're going to be uncomfortable. You're going to be stretched. You're going to be lengthened. You're going to get crushed. You're going to have warfare. You got to count the cost. You got to release your past. And at the threshold, you got to come to a new level of consecration. Are you with me? Garment. Let's talk about the garment. The Hebrew word for garment shares the same root word. Listen. For treachery or betrayal. Genesis 27, we see Jacob deceives Isaac to get the blessing with a 
garment. Genesis 37, Joseph's brothers sold him and then took his garment to their father. Genesis 39, Joseph was, Joseph was in Potiphar's house. Potiphar's wife took his garment and blamed him. Many times humans will use garments for personal selfish gain, but the Father, the Holy Spirit uses garments for kingdom assignments and purposes. Be careful who is close to you this year that is actually clothed with a garment of treachery. Many of you are in familiar circles. You should have left them a long time ago. Hey, you should have left them a long time ago. But you've been being used and they're all the while sitting at the same table with you wearing a garment of deceit and treachery. And then all of a sudden you're gonna say, well, look what they did to me, sugar. I'm warning you this morning. You need to discern. So let's talk about thresholds, gates, and garments quickly. The first one we're gonna talk about is Samson. Samson, y'all can look at his story in Judges 13, 14, 15, 16. Samson, see the gate that he, or the door that he was supposed to go through was defeating the Philistines. But the threshold to get over into this door was the lust of the flesh. It was the lust of the flesh. See, Samson was a Nazarite, meaning in Judges 13, 14, he was supposed to stay away from the vine, wine, anything dead. He wasn't supposed to cut his hair. But see, what happened in Judges 16, 4 says, after this, say after this, this. Samson fell in love with a Philistine woman living in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Deliah. Sorek literally means vine. So what he was supposed to stay away from, what he got warned about, he went to the place of the Valley of Sorek, the Valley of the Vine, and that's when, see, that's the first crossing over that he did. He didn't listen, he wasn't obedient. And then he went and got into bed with Delilah. So you don't just jump into bed with Delilah, you actually have, it's step by step, it's the little foxes, it's the little things that will catch you. I'm telling you right now, you had better be careful of Delilah because she's coming for your vision. She's coming for your strength. She's coming for your children. You better be careful, young men, to stay out the way and you've been warned by your mama and you don't want to listen because the lust of the flesh wants to drive you. But I am warning you today that she will take your strength and run. See, the garment that Samson wore was a garment of death. See, the way he handled the threshold determined whether he wore the garment of death or whether his enemies would wear the garment of death. But because he didn't deal with the lust of flesh, see, his giant wasn't Delilah, it was his uncrucified lust. And you might not be dealing with sexual lust. Maybe it's for food or shopping. Maybe it's pornography. Maybe it's something else. But you better deal with the lust of the flesh this year because Delilah is waiting for you. Samson killed Philistines but caved to Delilah. He died with the ones he was supposed to defeat. Next, John the Beloved. Revelation 4, the Spirit of the Lord says to John, come up here, come up higher. I'm gonna show you what's about to take place, which is the book of Revelation, right? But before that, say, but before that, but before that, John was boiled in oil, he was forced to drink poison, and he was exiled on the Isle of Patmos. See, the gate that John the Beloved was being offered was the gate of or the door of revelation. But the threshold of the gate or the door of revelation was labeled suffering. Was labeled suffering. Many of us love to have our ears tickled. We love the sugar, we love the sweet, love the, we love the Skittles and the rainbows and the candy corn, uh, candy corn. But we love all of those things. You know, Pastor Trish loves candy corn. Bleh. And, um, <laughs> We always love the, the, the encouraging things, right? But we don't wanna hear knowing him and the fellowship of his suffering. 
pick up your cross and follow me. What is a cross? It's denying yourself. Our Western Christianity has made things really easy that if you, listen, you, you only wanna hear what is pleasing to your ears because you don't want to suffer. Listen, there is something of a, of a garment that you can wear whenever you suffer well. Romans 5, 3 through 5 says this, with joy let us exalt in our sufferings and rejoice in our hardships, knowing that hardship produces patient endurance. And endurance, proven character, prove, it, it proves with character, hope and confident assurance of eternal salvation. Nobody wants to talk about the hard stuff because you know what? It's not fun. The greatest crushing that I've been through, I, I, I buried my stillborn baby in 2002, two days before Christmas. There's been a lot, I don't need to talk all about that stuff, but the last five months have been, and really the last two years have been probably some of the greatest crushing of my life. With great crushing to the extent that you are willing to submit to the crushing will be the extent to which you have such precious holy oil. When David graduated, and I say graduated because I don't like died, he's more alive than he's ever been. I had a decision to make because there were, yes, Pentecostals, Bishop came and preached the service, but there were Pentecostals there, there was Lutherans there, there was agnostics, atheists, you know, Episcopals, every Baptist, everybody was there. And I had a decision to make whether or not I was going to really glorify Jesus and bring honor to my husband. So I had a decision and that, the decision was, am I going to worship like my hair's on fire and really give it all to the Lord or am I just going to be not who I am? And so I did, had to decide in that moment of great brokenness and suffering and crushing what I was going to offer him because I would never get to offer him this second time. So in that moment, I decided to offer him and give him my heaviness and he gave me a garment of praise. There is, there is something to be said when you suffer well. When you suffer well and you come through this gate of revelation. Many of you have been suffering and you've almost gotten to this gate, this door of revelation. And you've almost walked through, but the suffering has made you turn back. Because suffering can either draw you to him or push you away from him. But that's your choice, that's not his. So in this moment, you have to decide, if, am I going to suffer well? Am I going to endure this? Am I going to understand that when I suffer, I'm more like him because I understand him better? Am I going to get to this door and decide to turn back because I can't take it? No, not me. Not me. You have a decision to make today with the suffering that the suffering that you're enduring right now. Because when you suffer well and you get to this, this gate, this door of revelation, when you come on the other side of suffering well, you wear a garment of glory and nobody can take the garment of glory away from you. I said this in first service, so I'm gonna say it to you, amen. Grow up. Many of us are so content with what we lived in and what we did 40, 50 years ago. I've been saved 35 years, Amanda. Well, that's great. What have you done lately? We can't be whiny babies in this season. Some of you wanna be coddled, but you don't wanna be confronted. This is not a place that's going to coddle you and it's gonna help bandage your wounds every single week. It's time to grow up. It's time for you to grow up. It's time to pour in the wine and pour in the oil and get some healing and move on. Grow up. Be a worshiping warrior, not a whiny baby. Amen, that was good. You don't wanna hear it, but I said it. 
I said what I said. Amen. The next one is Lazarus. John chapter 11. Let's turn there quickly, please. John chapter 11. It's in verse... Uh, I don't know, I don't have my glasses. 39, Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an offensive odor for he's been dead four days. It is hopeless, hopeless. See, Lazarus' gate was labeled resurrection, but the threshold of his gate was hopelessness. Well, Amanda, what does that mean? It means hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. See, Lazarus, when Jesus called his name, he could have worn, he was supposed to be wearing from grave clothes to garments of a new life. That's what he was, was, was transferring. That was the transference that was happening in the spirit realm. See, many of us are dealing with such hopelessness that we can't come through this gate of resurrection. We can't come through this door of resurrection to, to actually wear the garment of new life. Why? Because those who benefited from your death, from your bondage, from your captivity, from your voice being muzzled because of the grave clothes and because of the stone, they're not going to help move the stone. They're not going to help unwrap you whenever you come out of the grave. Why? Because it profit, profited them. It advanced them and it promoted them whenever you decided to stay in the grave. They advanced because you wouldn't or you couldn't cross the threshold of hopelessness. They would prefer that you stayed there today. But I'm telling you by the spirit of the Lord this morning that there is new hope that is arising for you. You do not have to stay in the grave. You don't have to stay in the tomb. You don't have to play, stay in a place where your voice is muzzled and you don't know who you are. The Lord is saying, I'm giving you hope. I'm giving you hope. I'm giving you new hope this morning. Deborah is the next one, Judges 4. Judges 4. Deborah was a judge in Israel. She was the fourth judge in Israel, and she was the only woman who was judge. She was the only woman. Now Deborah, verse 4, a prophetess, was judging Israel. She used to hit, sit and hear disputes. Suddenly, say suddenly, Israel was surrounded by the army, the Israel, uh, by the enemy armies, and Deborah calls for Barak, who was the leading general of Israel's army at the time. So it was a woman, listen, it was a woman saying, come on, let's do this together. Listen, the body of Christ has been putting half of its army on the bench for a really long time. Is there misogyny in the church against women in ministry? A hundred thousand percent. I've been heckled from the pulpit. I've been told many times I need to sit down and preach. Sugar, you're talking to the wrong one. You know why? There's also a feministic spirit, a spirit of feminism that has been in the church. And it's just as evil, it's just as wrong. You've got to have both male and female. You've got to have both apostle and prophet, and you have that in this house. You have that in your house, in this house. See, the Israel, the, the armies were advancing, they were coming against Israel, and Deborah had a choice. Do I sit back? There we go, just leave it. Do I sit back? I'll pick it up later. Maybe it just killed something. Do I sit back and um, do nothing, or do I advance so that the gate that we go through is called rest and peace? Because in Judges 5, 31, it says the land had rest and peace for 40 years because it says, I, Deborah, arose. The threshold that Deborah had to go through was the fear of man, the status quo, maybe misogyny. Deborah probably had to deal with some of that. Ladies, listen to me. You better figure out who you are this year. 
Deborah is a dollet word. Bee means Deborah. Bee is a dollet word. Honey is a dollet word. Bee make, bees make honey. They have honeycombs. Honeycomb is a dollet word. You'd better know who you are this year because it's time for mothers and fathers to arise as one. You can't have a family without a mama and you can't have a family without a daddy. I don't care what they say in, in this wokeism foolishness. You need a mother and a father because here's what I know. They're coming for our children. They're coming for your children. They're coming for the generations that are behind you. What does that mean, Amanda? There is a new religion on the rise and it's called wokeism. And it's anti-Semitic, it's anti-USA. Come on, I am proud to be an American. It is gender ideology confusion in this wokeism. It's trying to change who God ordained. See, so what does that mean? It's actually anti-God. That spirit is anti-God. That, that religion that's arising is anti-God and it's very much like Sharia law. It, it's, prov it's provoking you to say something and then it wants to cancel you. It wants to cut off your voice. It wants to cut off your head. But I'm telling you, you've got to use your voice this year to speak to the door. Come on, this is the war this year. They're coming for the generations behind us. The Hebrew word for generation is spelled D-O-U-R and it's, it's pronounced door. So as we're talking about doors, it's really about the next generation. See, Deborah's choice to go through the door of peace and rest in the land when she walked through that thing and she did not bow to the fear of man at the threshold. She then wore a garment of motherhood. Yeah. It's time for the mama bears and the papa bears to arise and do their job. Yeah. Well, Amanda, there's just so much that's happened. I can't do anything. That's the problem to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. You've decided that your voice means nothing. I gotta go, okay, ha, ha, ha. All right, Ruth is the next one. The gate or the door was destiny. See, Ruth went from working in the field to actually owning the field because of her new husband. The threshold that she had to deal with, that Ruth had to deal with was bitterness. See, what happened with Ruth, Ruth, she actually, actually was living in another land and her father-in-law died and her her uh, husband died. And she looks at Naomi, her mother-in-law. Hi, Barbara, my mother-in-law that lives with me. She decided where you go, I'm gonna go, and where you stay, I'm going to stay. Listen, I never thought that I would be Ruth in the Bible. The, the day after David passed, I didn't tell this in first service, but the day after David passed, Dave, Barbara looks at me and goes, well, I guess we really are Ruth and Naomi now, huh? And I said, well, you ain't fixing to be Mara. <laughs> because Naomi changed her name from Naomi to Mara, which means bitterness. Yeah. 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 See, Ruth had a choice to deal with this door of destiny, but at the threshold was bitterness. Yeah. She had her own bitterness to deal with because of her loss. Yeah. But she dealt with her bitterness and when she did that, she wore a garment from widowhood to bring a new bride. From mourning to dancing. The spirit of heaviness for the garment of praise. Listen, dance is a dollet word. So when you are, Jesus, please let this stay. Oh, man, I should have prayed the first time. Okay. So have you been grieving something? There's a time to weep, there's a time to laugh, there's a time to mourn, there's a time to dance. That's what Ecclesiastes says. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. 
well, Amanda, I've just been this or I've been that. See, Ruth was married to a man by the name of Milan, not Mulan, Milan. And his name meant sick, weak, wounded. He died. She got married and Boaz's name meant strength. So she had to leave what she already knew to go and get the new strength, to get the new field, to now owning the field. Now she was the bride and she was in the line of the Messiah, Jesus. The last one, I wanna say this. You can't stay in the familiar place this year. I'm telling you, the Lord is coming to make you uncomfortable. The four friends, I wanna talk about this one. Go to Luke 5, if you have your Bibles with you. Luke chapter 5. It says in Luke chapter five, verse 17, one day as he was teaching there, the Pharisees, Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present with him to heal. Some men were came, they came carrying on a stretcher, a man who was paralyzed, and they tried to bring him in and lay him down in front of Jesus. But, everybody say but. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, because of the crowd, because of the crowd, because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and removed some tiles to make an opening and lowered him through the tiles with his stretcher into the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. See, the gate that the paralytic with the four friends, come on, it matters who your friends are. The gate for the paralytic was a gate of miracles. It was a gate of miracles. See, there's different doors. There's a door you have to open, you have to pull, it takes strength. There's an automatic door, those revolving doors that you have to wait on the timing. It's like whenever you play double dutch in high school, right, or middle school, and you gotta jump at the right time. Some doors, it's a timing thing. And then other doors you actually have to create. Are you hearing me? Some doors you actually have to create. And they decided to create the door. Why? What was at the threshold of this door or this gate of miracles? At the threshold was religion. Because it says, one day he was teaching their Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee, Judea, and from Jerusalem. So all the heavy hitters were there. And they were watching and they were waiting. See, they had crowded in the place that spirit of religion had crowded in the place so that there was no opening. So they had to create the opening for the miracle. Are you listening? This year, you are going to have to deal with that religious spirit that you've been battling for generations in your family. There is a religious spirit that has been trying to choke out the apostolic and the prophetic voice in the church for a very long time, but it is very strong right now. And Lubbock also deals with this spirit of religion. But I'm telling you by the spirit of the Lord this morning that this double gate, this double gate, this double gate, this double gate, listen TWC, this double gate that the Lord has for you, this double gate of miracles, you've got to deal with that spirit of religion in this region. Well, Amanda, we're not seeing the miracles we, you know, you see in other countries. We're just not seeing that. Right, you're not. Sometimes, but not all the time. Why is that? Because that religious spirit has been suffocating the church for years. Because whenever you deal with the spirit of religion, when you deal with that serpent at the gate, that religious spirit, and you walk through the door of miracles, you're going to see a transformation in this region. See, the church needs revival, but outside the world needs reformation and transformation. We've been praying for revival in, in the world. No, 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 no. We need revival in the church. Revival in the church, reformation in the world. Are you with me this morning? They had to create the opening because of the religious spirit. A religious spirit will always make sure there's no room for anybody else but them. 
You better discern your alignments this year. Yeah. The worship team will come. I've got 10 minutes, I need to hurry. I want to, I want to provide you an opportunity to respond this morning. Campus pastors, if you'll go ahead and start with your altar workers, please, your worship teams. Here's what I know to be true. You might be John the Beloved. You might be Lazarus with hopelessness. You might be um, the paralytic with dealing with religion. You might be Ruth and you're trying to deal with bitterness. You might be um, Deborah and you're dealing with misogyny or you're dealing with this, this, this thing that's trying to, to shut you down. You might be John the Beloved and you're dealing with suffering. Here's what I know. There are people that are here that want to help you. You don't have to live in betrayal. You don't have to live in hopelessness. You don't have to live in these places. Please stand up with me, please. I want to give a warning this morning because I feel it very strongly. In the year of the open door, it also means that things that have been, you've been hiding in your closet and you don't want anybody else to find out. I'm telling you, the Lord is giving you an opportunity right now to open up that closet and deal with the skeletons, deal with the lies, deal with the adultery, deal with the fornication, deal with the perversion, deal with the addiction. The Lord is coming to open your closet doors. If you don't open it this right now, if you don't open it, He will. And I'm telling you, you would want to open it instead of Him. You will not hide from this anymore. So if you need to repent for those things, come forward. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your savior, come forward this morning. This is the year where the Lord is knocking on your heart. He's saying, I want to know you and I want you to know me. Many of you are in torment right now and the torment is because you don't know him. Come, 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 come on. Some of you are really dealing with a, a spirit of hopelessness where you're feeling like, uh, I, I just want to stay in my tomb. I want to stay isolated. Listen, whenever you are isolated, you are always going to be in bed with hopelessness. You need to come on down, come on down, come, come, come.